Welcome to Comic Book Shopping. We are here at Golden Apple Comics in the heart of Hollywood. I am here with Yaya Abdul Mateen II. There we go. That's right, Black Manta and, spoilers for later, a character in Watchmen. They don't know what's coming, and then boom. And I'm learning right now, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is a lesson. It sounds like the Matrix. Yeah. I mean, it does. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Now, I haven't seen the last episode yet, uh -huh. so this whole thing has been like me dancing around knowing what happens, but will he spoil it in the episode? Probably not, but first, let's get some comics, man. Let's, let's get some shopping. It. Let's do it. All right, so you're in a lot of comic book properties and a lot of this genre content. Were yeah. you a comic book guy growing up? No, never was a comic book guy growing up. You know, I, I was in debate club, uh, chess club, maybe even student government a little bit. I, I hosted pep rallies. Yeah. Comic books, to me, that was always a little too nerdy for me. I was just, I just did not relate, but I'm glad I found it when I did. Yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was severely mistaken. <laughs> it's severely a different world, mistaken. man. It's a different world, man. Bill Maher's wrong. <laughs> now, you've got an MFA and you also graduated from Yale. MFA in uh, acting. And then you got a degree in architecture as well, yeah. right? Yeah. So those are very, very different wheelhouses, but you find a lot of actors are also like architects in that whole world. Do you have like different hats you put on those creativities? Or does it feel like kind of the same process? The hours are the same, you know. Architecture can keep you up for hours and hours. And then it's all, it's all about the imagination, right? So it's about expanding the mind. Acting can be the same way where you just kind of delve into something and it really just expands your mind. It's really all about the creativity, I find. Plus, architects are sort of, it's a, sort of a pretentious profession, I think. You know what I mean? Like the, the audacity to think that you can design the entire world. And, and you yeah. know, actors, you know, I don't have to speak about how pretentious acting, <laughs> acting can be. Actors are pretentious, <laughs> what are you talking about? I never yeah, would put so, that together. There's yeah, an ego so, to both. I think so, definitely. I, I would always say, like, if I didn't get work in acting, I'd just build my own theater and then act on the stage for myself, Hell yeah, right? Man. So, uh, I'm glad it's turned out. Yeah, you got the other way. You're like, this worked out, this is okay. I'm glad this is going on. All those degrees, man, that's incredible. I saw that, I was like, how do I talk to this guy about comics? He went to Yale. I want to talk about some comics. Let's do it. We're going to start with, I mean, when you talk about the man who made the world of Watchmen, yeah. you cannot not talk about Swamp Thing. And I'm learning right now, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. this is a lesson right Okay, now beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not a Yale professor, but I would say <laughs> Swamp Thing is amongst the most important graphic novels of all time. Okay, now I know. So I'd say this and Watchmen are the two, like if you're only going to read two ever, this is it. Get out. So this would be the other one. Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. It's about the world we live in, so it's about tangible versus intangible. Yeah. And the whole thing makes you feel more human while relating to an inhuman character. All right, I'm it. Grant Morrison, he's a modern like titan of comics, but he came up around the same time as Alan Moore. Okay. He brought back a character from 30 years before and made him relatable in a new way, much like Watchmen's doing right now. This sure, book sure, directly sure. translates this obscure 50s character. He started playing with like what reality was. Issue five is a uh, like Wiley e. Coyote commentary, yeah. where Wiley e. Coyote's an alien from another planet. We're studying him as humans, wondering what reality is to us. And then they plant seeds about like whether the existential crisis he's going through is he in a comic? Are we in a comic? Are we real? Is he real? This book's nuts. It sounds like The Matrix. Yeah. I mean, it does. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It is a head trip. It's something special. Dope. Stephen King's kid, Joe Hill, wrote under a pseudonym for years. He's a comic writer. Actual kid. His actual kid. Get out of here. And he wrote an entire anthology that Netflix is adapting right now that is a horror series that actually scared the crap out of me. Wow. A comic that actually like had me jumping flipping pages. Its characters are instantly lovable and it's the next Netflix property, so I feel like you got another competition. I have a question. Which because you, I mean you sound like you know everything about comics. Exhaustingly. <laughs> The is internet's there, like, no, he there, doesn't. Is there such thing as uh, pop-up comics? They've done that as a gimmick. They're probably not in here, but they're out there. All right, cool. cool but this cool. one will make you feel like you're popping in. All it's right, a whole cool. experience. I'll take it. All right, we'll start you there, and we'll move on to some more, man. Let's do it, baby. All right, so we'll run through these with you. All right, tell uh, me what I got. Fantastic Four is going to be, they're trying to bring that back into the mainstream. The Negative Zone is an alternate universe where Reed can kind of do experiments, yeah. and they get trapped in it all the time. This book kind of takes place in a, in a subsection of the universe, so it's a perfect place to dive in. Far Sector is a book that is from this incredible artist, Jamal Campbell. Take a look at this art in there. So this is a Green Lantern spinoff. She's a new Green Lantern, and she's like a space cop on an outer patrol. Whoa. So we're talking like, if you're if you're like a Harlem cop and you got to go just outside your precinct, that's kind of like the Green Lantern Fire Sector. So, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Street cop, but for space. Okay. 
Oh, I mean, we got to talk about your boy Aquaman, and this yeah. actually ties into my next round of questions. Yeah. So Aquaman is completely different within the comic genre. Did you prep those two characters differently? One of the processes was to go online and to see what the hell people were saying about Black Manta, because I was just like, I don't want to play this guy in a, in a mask. Like, yeah. I, I wanted, I, you know, I'm an actor. Talk about being vain. I want my face to show. You know what I mean? <laughs> he wears this. And he wears the big mask. And so I said, I want to know what people like about him. So uh, I did pour into the comics, but I went online and I just really started to gather a perspective about what the public was saying about the character. I mean, I sort of did the same thing about with Dr. Manhattan. I wasn't really a fan of comics. And yeah. then my friend said, look, it's a graphic novel. And so I started to go through and I said, oh, yeah, this is really cool. So I think eventually it was sort of a, a similar process where I did my research in the comics, in the graphic novel, did a little bit of online research just to see what the public conversation was and then made my own opinion about yeah, it. Yeah. Now, that costume itself is so iconic to both the movie and comic books. Like, Which nothing is, looks like that helmet. Okay, like, yeah. What was that development process like? Were you in the room like, oh, guys, I can't put that on? Like, the cats at Ironhead, they made it look really cool. That was just really my concern. I'm like, okay, how are we gonna do this? Is it gonna fit? Is it gonna be practical? Everybody thought that it was gonna be CGI. Yeah. It's like, no, there was a real helmet that I got to wear. And as long as it looked cool, then I could be confident and like badass in it, right? Yeah. So they made it to like fit my proportions and so that I can walk around. It wasn't really intuitive at first. Had to have to hold my head down to make it look like I was looking forward. It was like kind of, it was yeah. all types of crazy. And uh, Dr. Manhattan, that was just a, a birthday suit. Yeah, that's, like, that's the opposite <laughs> right, color. Right, right, like, right. There's nothing it's on. Just it's like, just it's me. It's the black and white suit, and then it's the birthday suit. So. <laughs> So I love that you got into the world through Watchmen, like graphic novels brought you in. So you got some of those. These are some of mine from the, like the last week and a half I'd recommend. Yep. So Marauders is a Kitty Pride led book where she's a pirate. She's literally going around rescuing mutants on a ship. Okay. So it's a really fun like hijinxy tale. She's got a dragon, Kitty Pride's great. And then X-Force is probably the most brutal X-Men title I've seen in years. Yeah. Because X-Force is supposed to represent the things the X-Men can't do. Uh -huh. like, the, the, like the off the book stuff. Because they've been persecuted their whole lives. There's gonna be some vengeance there. Basket Full of Heads is another horror comic from the same writer of your lock and key. Basket full of heads. Basket full of heads. Remember uh, the Freddy movies and like the yeah, Jason yeah, movies yeah, that sure, feel sure. of VHS? Yeah, it sure. It feels like you put a VHS Okay, in. okay, okay. So you love the characters right away. The art's really clean and linear. This is like a summer camp book. Yeah. So highly recommend. Friend of the show, David Desmalchian, he's in tons of comic book properties. Like he's in Suicide Squad and Dark Knight. Okay. And now he's writing comics. Okay. So he's a diehard comic book guy. Now he's on the other side of it. So he's writing this horror comic. It's really accessible. It's really fun. And it involves all the horror monsters. If you're going to be playing Dr. Manhattan, you got to know Sue. Yeah. And I feel like this is Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale write just beautiful iconography. They write classic Americana. Yeah. So quite a diverse stack, but I want you to, to know comics, man. Yeah, that's dope. Welcome. Cool. Appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it. You're working on a serialized TV show in 2019, which is crazy. Uh -huh. What's been like watching a show knowing you're about to know twists? Like yeah, it's that's like the best experience. Week to week to week, it's sort of like I got seven weeks to build this relationship with the public around this character, Cal, around this husband who people like. They say he's kind of weird, he's a little quiet, and then, then all of a sudden, boom, you pull the rug out from yeah. under the eyes. So, you know, I got about two months of buildup while at the same time knowing that, you know, at the end of this thing, it's gonna take a big, you know, a really big turn. You're Dr. Manhattan, man. Yeah, that's what they say. How does it, how do you comprehend omnipotence as an actor? How do you go like, what if I knew time and everything else? It, this was very difficult. This was probably one of my most difficult uh, jobs because how do you play all of those things at the same time? How do you play all of existence all at the same time, right? I wanted to relate to him as a god, but I wanted to relate to him as a god that wanted to be human. So my challenge was, if I lean too far into the human, then he's not Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. If I lean too far into the god, then he's not relatable and people can't really care or feel for him. He just sort of becomes a robot. And then I felt, I, I felt for Regina, you know, because she had to act against me. And sometimes, you know, there's emotional scenes in our world. I wanted to give her some of the same passion that she was giving me. And I said, you know, sometime in between the scenes, I said, I'm so sorry. I, I wish I could give you more, but yeah. he wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? It'd be and, harder and, than playing a villain because be it's aggression, but it's right, like, I am right, just right. here and relating. That tweet, was, yeah. that, was that a celebration? Because you knew what was coming. Like I, That, that was me knowing what was going on and knowing that even though some people said that they knew it, no one knew how, you yeah. know? And so that was me watching everyone go through the emotional ladder of realization and I was just refreshing Twitter saying, okay, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. They didn't know, they don't know what's coming. And then boom, everyone was just so surprised and the whole internet just like exploded oh. with that realization. And I was happy because I felt like I fooled them. I felt like I personally fooled them because no one knew, you know, no one yeah. really, really knew. And if, you, and if you did know, you didn't know how it was gonna happen. You know, and so and that was my moment of saying, I win, I win, I win. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have been reading comics since I was three, but I never got Silver Surfer. This book finally got me Silver Surfer. Okay. So this is Donny Cates, who writes these very like 80s metal kind of like he's got this aggression about him that I love. Yeah. It feels like a Burning Man trip. Yeah. Like, I've I've seen these visuals and never <laughs> saw Vision. This is amongst the generation of books that'll be like Watchmen in 10 years. This is a book about existential dread as told by robots. Okay. Vision, okay. The, the Avenger, uh -huh. has a family and he wants to be a normal guy. So he moves to the suburbs and he has the 50s dream family all while murder and hijinks and AI, all of the things that we fear are coming in the future, See, but set in the past. Wanting to be a normal guy is a trap, man. Always. It's the trap, miracle man. Now this character is written by a certain writer that wrote Watchmen. So this character, if there's any guff about the way the Dr. Manhattan storyline came about, uh -huh. this guy was a hero in the 50s, forgot who he was, and then came back and is now an all powerful creature. So this and Animal Man are two books that'll make you kind of lean back like the time paradox. Okay. All right, so that'll be the last book. Let's get you checked out, man. Cool. So you were talking about how you actually follow along on Twitter and all the madness. Yeah. Like, what's been some of your favorite interactions so far? <laughs> like, what What is the internet giving you? Oh, right now they're talking about my. They're talking about my. Uh, <laughs> like your wardrobe. Choices? About my bear. About my bear behind. <laughs> right now, and there's a lot of comedy on that. All right, what's the damage? Two forty-eight sixty-four. All right, let's do it. See you the next few episodes. All the best. Let's get All you right, reading, you man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has been another episode of Comic Book Shopping. By the time this airs, you will have seen the finale of Watchmen, which I have not yet, but time being a flat circle. Well, he's seen it, you've seen it. This feels great for me as the guest. How are those comics feeling for you, man? I'm all good, man. I'm excited. I got some, uh, some heavy lifting and some heavy reading. Yeah. Dude, perspective. I cannot wait to hear what you think of that wealth of knowledge and madness. I would like to thank Golden Apple as always. Yes. I would like to thank comic books for existing. Thanks, guys. Peace. <laughs>